Greetings, everybody. My name is Fox Rose, and thank you for joining me for my O-Star teaching circle. I am going to go ahead and cleanse my area, and then we're going to get into the story and um, the teaching circle. So, without further ado, let us begin. Sure, of water be pure again. Ancient ones of earth and water. Please join us in cleansing and contemplating this circle. <laughs> Element of air. Please join us and cleansing and contemplating this circle. Lit. Element of fire. Please join us in cleansing and concentrating this circle. Oh, ancient ones of north and earth, please join us and lead us and protect us during this fight. Right. Halo and welcome. Welcome. Oh, ancient ones of east and air, please join us and lead us and protect us during this right. Hail and welcome. Ancient ones of south and fire, please join us and lead us and protect us in this right. Hail and welcome. Oh, ancient ones of west and water, please join us and lead us and protect us in this right. Hail and welcome.
a great Lord and great lady. Please join us and protect us and lead us in this right. Deliver the words you would like for me to say. Hail and welcome. By hearth, by fire, by flame, by vine, this place and all within our mind held by the ever circling wheel of stars the crown of Aryan rod called by the lady of the dark moon summoned by the lady of the cauldron as the white horse gallops across the moors as Shanna fox goddess calls her kits as Ran wolf goddess leads the hunt daughter of the honor moon priestess dragon rider storm caller caller baby bringer she who walks the fields of frozen silence so be it hi so let's begin so, Ostara. What is Ostara? Where did the name come from? What are the symbols of Ostara? These questions will be answered in this video. Now, Ostara is essentially the vernal equinox. You know what the vernal equinox is? It's the spring equinox. Spring has sprung, ladies and gentlemen. It is the perfect balancing of light and dark. Well, one of the most perfect balancing of light and dark within the wheel of the year. The other one would be, come on, <laughs> the spring equinox, the fall equinox. These are the times where we spring forward and fall back. So this particular time though, this one is spring. So that means that the earth was straight up and down and started, you know, tilting on its axle. This is the day that, whoop, work, and then we start doing this again. So, as we tilt towards the sun, what does that mean? Well, um, that means that we have more daylight. So, this is the time that the light defeats the dark. The world has come alive. It's Bees are buzzing. <clears throat> Bees are buzzing. Butterflies are fluttering. We have new blooms coming out of the ground. They're sticking their little heads up and going, Hi, I'm here. Life has begun again. This, this, everything's have renewed. Everything that was dormant is now back. So, this is the time a fertility it's very evident I mean with all these flowers blooming the land is fertile fertile which is the best thing in the world the bees are going from plant to plant and they are um, pollinating fertilizing again this is the time of fertility this fertility is extremely evident in well this tree all those little spots are the new leaves coming out and it's wonderful it's great and this is one of my favorite times of the year so let's talk about Ostara where the name came from now well Ostara is named after um, the goddess Esther she is a German goddess and she's a fertility goddess who is celebrated every year well has been celebrated every year around april in a fertility festival now because she is a fertility goddess the female hormone estrogen 
also is named after her. With fertility, it is the beginning anew. So, when the Christians um, took the fertility festival and um, turned it into a celebration of Easter, it is the time where Jesus was risen, where he rose from the dead. Um, star. Um, it's about a moon phase. Or Easter is around the moon phase. And it's always celebrated. Not always. Sometimes it's in uh, March. But this is, it's the same every year around the same moon. And this was the time the fertility festival was also being celebrated. So there's those things about Ostar. So let's talk about some symbolism of Ostara. Well, this cute little guy, he's a bunny, the hair. Well, because of the time that this is celebrating the fertility, we start seeing a lot of bunnies and bunnies are associated with fertility. Did you know? that while a bunny is pregnant, a rabbit is pregnant, hare, whatever, they can still conceive other rabbits. That makes it more about abundance. This time is about abundance. And we have all this abundance showing with everything that's sprouting. And, and the little bees and the little birdies to calling and, and all the cute, adorable little hares. Now, in the Celtic tradition, the hare is very sacred and it's a totem it's also a symbol of the moon which is where I was going a little while ago with Easter um, <clears throat> the rabbit represents rebirth of nature um, and immortality since it was once thought to die daily and come back because of not because of it being nocturnal um, so, again, it was the symbol of abundance because of the rampant breeding that it can do. Now, one more symbol. Pick the pest special one. The egg. Now, a lot of people don't understand about the egg. And here is what, in my research, I have come up with to learn about this egg. This egg, not this one in particular, but eggs represent a seed. And the side of the seed is the yolk and the egg white. And those things represent the sun god and the goddess enveloping him. So again, a sign of fertility. The seed of the egg, the seed part, is because it, it, it it represents um, the promise of new life because inside every seed is a plant waiting to be born. I chose a clover because one of the things about clover is, is that all these little pieces here are seeds. And they come off and they they empty themselves out and they sprout everywhere and we have clover the blossoms this is the symbol of renew rebirth re life new life and the possibilities infinite possibilities and in seeds now I'm going to tell you a story about how the rabbit or the hare and the egg got to be uh, associated with each other and um, this is a, one of the myths that comes from um, it's, it's, the website said the Western country 
but this is a wonderful story and it has great dual purpose meaning and I'll go into that. So once upon a time, and the animal kingdom was gathered for a meeting in a flurry of great excitement. There was going to be a very special party and a very special guest was coming to visit them. That very special guest was the goddess herself. And every creature wanted to give her such a very special gift. Now, some of the animals were rich and some were very poor, but off they went to procure and prepare their gifts for the goddess. For only the very, very best will do. The hare was very excited. Although he was very poor, he dearly loved the goddess and he had a big, generous heart. He was going to give her his very finest gift that he could find. So he rushed home. He looked everywhere, in the cupboards, under the bed, and even the larder was empty. He had absolutely nothing to give to her, except one thing. On the shelf in the larder was a single solitary egg. And that was it. That's all he had. It's the only thing he had left. So the hare gently took the egg out of the larder and lovingly decorated it. And he took it to the party. The hare was worried because all the other animals gave their gifts of gold and silver and precious jewels. And all the hare had was this egg. Eventually, all the gifts had been given and the hare was the very, very last. Eventually, he just shyly and very slowly presented the goddess with the egg. She took it him, took it and looked at him and saw the true spirit of the hare. And there and then the goddess appointed the hare as her very special animal because he had given away everything he had. So this is where it, it leads me. He gave everything he had. He gave his all to the goddess. What can you give to her? Your loyalty, your love, your heart, your all. Now, saying this and doing it are two different things, two very different things because Sometimes, and sometimes life gets in the way, and, but you have to put her first. You have to do this, and you have to, to begin anew. He gave everything he had to her, a single solitary egg, and it was the greatest gift he could have given her. He loved her with his whole heart. So my message here today is give your all. Expect nothing in return, but give your all. Life gets in the way, things get out of hand, but you have to make time. And, and, and folks, I'm preaching to the choir here. You have to give you make time to do this and you have to give her your all she will take care of those who take care of her easier said than done i know i know but this is what we have to do so again 
since this is a time of renewal, rebirth, new life, it's also time for new commitments and committing to the goddess and knowing that your life can begin again through her. It's one of the greatest gifts that anyone could ever give you. I'm giving you this gift. I'm giving you this message. This is the time to renew. Renewing that commitment is one of the best things that anyone could ever do. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Feel free to contact me, comment on the video, but remember that this time, this time of the equinox, the time where everything the you know is is bustling with new life and and rebirth and renewal. This is a time for you to renew your relationship and your life by following the goddess, or or your life following the goddess. You can be stuck and stagnant, but this right here is the perfect opportunity for you to unstick yourself. And again. I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> so, comment. Ask me anything. And I look forward to seeing all of you very soon. Great lady and Lord, thank you for joining me in this rite. Go if you must, stay if you will. Hail and farewell. Oh, ancient element of west and water, thank you for joining me in this rite. Go if you must, stay if you will. Hail and farewell. Ancient one of south and water. I got messed that up. Thank you for joining me in this rite. Go if you must, stay if you will. Hail and farewell. Well, ancient element of east and air. Thank you for joining me in this rite. Go if you must, stay if you will, hail and farewell. Oh, ancient element of earth and north, thank you for joining me in this rite. Go if you must, stay if you will, hail and farewell. The circle is open, but it's not broken. Mary meet and Mary part until we marry meet again. Bye.